Hi, I'm here at the Millionaire Corner. I'm at the Writer's Block, and I'm talking with Kent about what you should be checking out this week on our website. How are you doing today, Kent? I'm good. You're looking radiant. Oh, thank you. I'll take it. So, I'm six months as of yesterday. Good stuff. Congratulations. And you know, radiant is a word used only for pregnant women, so I just, that's why I use that. And whenever someone compliments me, I just say thank you, because I know they're lying, or <laughs> I'll, I'll take it while I can. So, what are we talking about this week on the website? I'm working on a story right now, as a matter of fact, you just interrupted me. Um, I'm uh, writing a recap of a story from CNN where they selected the 10 healthiest cities in the world. And what they did was they sent out um, surveys to city officials and said, what are you doing to promote health? Now, it's not like they had real criteria, but they looked at 10 different cities and spoke about what they've doing, done to improve health. And a good example is New York is one of the cities. Now, you wouldn't think of New York as necessarily being a healthy city, but their ban on smoking has been just absolutely intense. Now, the law in New York is you can't smoke in parks or on plazas, and they have, you know, in New York you have a lot of plazas. Right, right, um, right. Another example is Monte Carlo in Monaco, which has the lowest infant mortality rate in the world simply because they have so much money and they pay for excellent health care. So it's a, it's a look at, at some cities that are doing some really cool things. Another one I'm writing about, really, it's really cool, is this city in uh, Sweden named John Kopping, which created a woman, her name's Esther, and she's 88 years old and she's imaginary. But every decision they every decision they make based on environment and healthcare is based on what would this do for Esther. And now the whole, like several other cities in Sweden have adopted these women where they think of her as being 88 and she's got, you know, some small lung problems and she, she walks everywhere she goes and they think of her every time they make a decision, which I thought was a pretty cool idea. Another story that's going to be on Monday, um, we did a survey of affluent investors and simply asked them the question, if you're paying for something under $5, how do you pay for it? Do you use cash? Do you use debit card? Or do you use plastic? And the answers are, for under 5 people are, a lot of people still use cash, but the minute it goes over $5, the debit card either replaces the cash or a credit card is used. And we went all, we went all the way up. We went from 5 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to okay. 50. Um, we also... And the story also includes information from um, other sources in regards to the number of people who actually carry cash any longer. There's, it says that approximately 9% of Americans never carry cash. Um, and it goes up as the number of people that carry $20 at a time or $50 at a time. But it's, it's really not a lot of people walking around with a lot of uh, dollar bills any longer. How are you doing today, Donald? I am well. Did I hear radiant? Glowing, I think. I'll, <laughs> I'll see that his radiant and raise you glowing. Oh, I, I'll take it. I'll okay. take it. Thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. So what are, we, what are we reading about this week? Okay. Well, up on my entertainment uh, block this week, uh, today, uh, Friday, opens one of the most anticipated movies of the year. I was, Gone. I was hoping you were going to talk about it. Yes, Gone Girl. Yeah. Did you read the book? Um, no, but... Okay. That's going to make the movie that much better. Well, that's just <laughs> it. There are, you know, there's the, the readers and there's the moviegoers. And um, there was a lot of speculation about how the film might have been changed uh, from the book. And uh, both camps will be out. You know, those who read the book, those who said, oh, I'll wait to see the movie. So I've done a roundup. Uh, Hollywood loves to make films based on books, just like they like sequels and remakes. You've got pre-sold stories. You've got uh, characters that people know about. There's interest. You know, um, it's, it's a known quantity. And uh, the fall movie season is bringing several books besides Gone Girl to the screen. We rounded uh, some of them up. Uh, right. For example, for families, which you will be soon, yeah. uh, the Box Trolls, uh, based on a book called Here Be Monsters that just opened up. Um, there's uh, another book called uh, Wild, a memoir starring um, um, Reese Witherspoon. Oh, she's getting really, some, yeah. she's getting some Oscar buzz for that that's about great. a woman who lost her mother and her marriage, and mm -hmm. she set out on a, an over a thousand mile trek in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, that is our roundup on the entertainment block. Wow, these are going to be some great stories. Well, we'll see. <laughs> um, and speaking of shameless uh, self promotion, uh, Kent, who you were just talking to, uh, has written a new book. Oh, wow. If These Walls Could Talk. It's uh, based on his time covering the Chicago Bulls during the dynasty years. Oh, yeah. 
And in this book, he shares uh, intimate stories of Michael Jordan, Dennis Rodman, Phil Jackson. So we'll talk to Kent next week about the book, about his years on the road with the Bulls. That is going to be awesome. What a great yeah. book everyone should be reading. Oh, yeah. And uh, so, so say you're a, a woman expecting mm -hmm. and you're invited to a wedding. What will you wear? Well, that is a troubling question, Donald, and something we're going to be talking about on the blog this week. So, on my fashion blog coming up on Monday, I have a wedding coming up, my cousin's wedding. And don't get me wrong, I love to go shopping, but maternity shopping sometimes can be a little bit more challenging. And I love to buy the jeans and the leggings and the big sweaters, but when you have to put on a formal outfit, sometimes you get a little bit more self-conscious. And you also don't want to spend all that money on something you might only wear once. So I talk about some great websites like ASOS that have some amazing, almost 300 plus maternity dresses that you could wear to weddings or a baby shower or a wedding shower um, or a dinner that you might have to go to with your husband for his work. So you're going to want to stop by this Monday to check out all the great maternity formal looks I have. And even if you're not expecting, I have some great looks for you as well. I'm Heather Kiley. Thanks so much for stopping by.